Oh, hey there. Uh, you may be wondering, what am I doing in the jungle? Uh, well, you see, I can't afford to go grocery shopping, and I'm really hungry. Uh, so I'm like, okay, let me just forage for some food. It can't be that hard, right? So I went and robbed the Taco Bell, uh, bought a plane, tried to fly to Romania. I crashed it, uh, because I didn't know how to fly. And here I am. I haven't really found anything yet, so, uh, I guess I just have to keep looking. Ah! Okay, okay. There has to be something out here, right? I, 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 there can't be nothing. I'm, go I'm going to die out here. Wait. What, what's that? Huh, that, that, that's pretty convenient. Uh, makes me wonder why someone left this here, but alright. Whoa, this place is decked out! They got food, water, a sleep number mattress, air conditioning, heat, a surround sound system, all the streaming services you can think of, a 4K Ultra HD TV, and a Super Nintendo with multiple games. Now, what are these games exactly? Well, we have Donkey Kong Country, Donkey Kong Country 2, Diddy's Conquest, and Donkey Kong Country 3, Dixie Kong's Double Trouble. And no Uniracers. So, I guess while I'm living off the land a little bit, let's take a look at the Donkey Kong Country games. Donkey Kong. You know him, you love him. One of the most iconic characters ever. He's the good guy, he's the bad guy, or he's just kinda there. Donkey Kong is just an amazing character who's had some amazing games. But, with all franchises, there's a beginning. So what was DK's beginning? Well, it was none other than 1980's Radar Scope. I guess we all start somewhere. Radar Scope was a game. It was alright. The problem with the game is it just didn't have a place in the market at the time. Space Invaders from 1978 was infinitely more popular, so in the end, Radar Scope fell flat on its face. Nintendo of America was established around this time as well, and one of their first decisions was to buy 3,000 Radar Scope machines. Since the game sold really poorly in the US, they still had a lot of machines left over. Nintendo had a pull with the company's entire creativity pool, pitching in some great and probably not so great ideas, with Shigeru Miyamoto's idea on a story between a gorilla, a carpenter, and a girl being chosen. It makes me wonder just how the other concepts were if this was the one that got picked. Eventually, the game was completed, so they modified the pre-existing radar scope boards to house the new and fresh Donkey Kong. And guess what? It blew up. After the rest of the Radar Scope Donkey Kong cabinets were sold, more cabinets were made. In under a year of it being released, Nintendo made over $180 million, and it just kept growing. A total of around 132,000 cabinets were sold in Japan and the United States. Its popularity and sales numbers were just insane. So there was bound to be a sequel. Donkey Kong Jr. Yep, there's another one. This time, Mario is the bad guy, and you have to free Donkey Kong as Donkey Kong Jr. The game did alright, definitely not as good as its predecessor, but it still sold over 30,000 cabinets. It's pretty similar to the original Donkey Kong, walking, jumping, collecting things, avoiding things, and getting to the top to free someone. It's just as fun and addicting as the original, so there is bound to be a sequel to the sequel. What is this? People loved Donkey Kong and Donkey Kong Jr., and with Donkey Kong 3, all of the familiar gameplay styles were completely thrown out the window. The game doesn't even have Mario, this time it has Stanley the Bugman. What, what even is a Bugman? The other games are pretty repetitive, I mean the levels just loop over and over again until you game over, but Donkey Kong 3 unlocked a new meaning of repetitive. Jump, spray, jump, spray, jump, spray, jump, spray, jump back down, spray, jump, spray, jump, spray. This is it. This is Donkey Kong 3. The dryness of this game and the overall video game crash of 1983 made this game do horrible, only selling around 5,000 cabinets. So after all that, while Mario went on to become the most famous thing to exist, Donkey Kong was left behind as the villain in favor of Bowser. The arcade games all got NES ports, and we also got the NES exclusive game Donkey Kong Jr. Math. Moving on. But after that, our mammalian friend was pretty much left behind, nearly forgotten about. Nearly. In summer of 93, Nintendo of America employee Tony Harmon was traveling certain parts of the world to find noteworthy studios and games that would pique interest back in Nintendo. 
He was visiting Rareware Studio and saw them developing an insane tech demo with digitizing 3D models as 2D sprites, and was stunned. He reported back immediately to Nintendo, thus creating a pretty good friendship between the two companies. Nintendo wanted a game to compete with the graphical capabilities as Disney's Aladdin on Sega Genesis, which had actual Disney animators working on the game's art style. Nintendo was pretty anxious about the project, so instead of using a franchise that is already super successful, they wanted to possibly revive a dead franchise, and her good buddy Donkey Kong was the perfect fit, because there wasn't really a whole lot of story or characters in Donkey Kong, so the creative freedom from Rare to make new characters and character designs absolutely flourished. Before the game was released, there was a huge marketing plan with the game, saying how it was only on Super Nintendo. A game that looks this good didn't need to have a 32x adapter, it didn't need to be on a CD. It was just put on a cartridge for the normal price of a standard Nintendo published game. No extra hardware was needed, which was a pretty big hit in Sega's teeth. The game was released on November 21st, 1994, and it was amazing. It became the third best selling game on the Super Nintendo, and it was a success in being a fresh start for Donkey Kong. Many gaming magazine publishers called it Game of the Year for 1994, and on top of that, it received so much positive feedback from critics and casual gamers as well. Well, what do you think? Is the game actually as good as people say, or do you think people are blinded by nostalgia and good graphics? Well, let's find out. This is Donkey Kong Country on the Super Nintendo Entertainment System. Here in the opening, we get a charming throwback to the original game, which gets rudely interrupted by the ape himself, Donkey Kong, as he pushes his grandfather off some trees. Cranky Kong decides to retaliate by throwing explosives at his grandson. First of all, that's quite impressive, throwing an explosive barrel like that at your age, and second of all, the game has been running for like 30 seconds and i just seen two attempts of ape murder. When we start the game, we can get an in-depth understanding of the plot. Reptile want banana, they steal banana from ape, ape goes ape and apes through the jungle to get banana back. Before we actually start playing playing the game, let's talk about some of the characters and stuff like that. First we have the Kongs. There's the man himself, Donkey Kong, sporting a new redesign by Rare. I feel like this DK is the perfect example of the saying, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. This design of the ape is perfect. Diddy Kong is here too. Yeah, after Donkey Kong's little whatever decided to pursue a degree in mathematics and go go-karting, DK hired his nephew Diddy to be his personal assistant. There's just something about this duo that is completely inseparable. You can't have one without the other. They're one of the greatest teams in video game history in my opinion. There's Cranky Kong who owns a teleporting cabin that can go all over the island. He gives snarky remarks to the ape and monkey duo about how they're not epic gamers like he is. He does give out hints and pointers about a few levels here and there, but he's here mostly just to harass DK. Then there's Donkey Kong's girlfriend, Candy Kong. She helps by saving your progress with the save barrel locations that appear throughout the island. And finally there's Funky Kong, who runs the National Kong Island Airport and flies the duo to everywhere that they've previously been. Pretty iconic cast in my opinion, with it to expand in future titles. Then there's the bad guys, the Kremlings. Kremlings are pretty awesome villains. There's critters, claptraps, crushes, clumps, and more, along with the leader of the Kremlings, King K. Rule. Well, I guess if I'm going to be staying here for the foreseeable future, uh, especially since my map died, I uh, guess I should get a fire going. I uh, didn't happen to bring an axe with me, so I guess I'm going to have to chop wood the old, old-fashioned way. I'm gonna cry. Donkey Kong Country is a platforming game, similar to Super Mario World. There's a world map to go from level to level, grab the collectibles, and get to the end of the level. The levels themselves vary quite a bit, from standard platforming, cramped underwater levels, minecart levels, and also boss levels. The platforming levels are examples of pure platforming fun. They're the standard type of level in the game. Nothing crazy, but there are a few neat gimmicks here and there. These levels allow you to use the moves in Donkey and Diddy's weaponry, such as rolling and slapping. The underwater levels are alright, like in most games it's hard to make an underwater level fun, but in this game I think they did a pretty good job of making it tolerable. Here Donkey and Diddy just frolic around in the ocean trying to find their way out. 
I wouldn't say it's a maze, but it certainly feels like it sometimes with the amount of branching pathways in these levels. Like I said, not bad, but definitely my least favorite type of level in the game. The minecart levels are some of the best levels in this game, and in my opinion, some of the best levels in any 2D platformer. It's all about reaction time. Don't jump too early and don't jump too late. These levels will always keep the adrenaline rushing. They're a lot of fun. Then there's the boss levels. At the end of every world, there's a boss that you have to defeat. The boss sprites are pretty goofy too, like, I don't know man, I don't want to see this bird's hyper-realistic bird flesh. Secrets are a constant in this game. It's littered with them in every level, with all those secrets contributing to 100% completion, which sorry to inform you, I didn't do. There really isn't a bad level that I can think of, but I will say this. This game is hard. It's not a difficulty you'd expect either, but when it hits, it hits. It's not the hardest game I've ever played, but it just feels like the game disguises itself as a fun, ape-themed platformer, but it turns out to be one of the most challenging games on the Super Nintendo, in my opinion. Alright, so I got my wood, and I forgot I don't have a way to light this. So, you know how a bird, like, sits on her eggs to keep them warm? Yeah, I tried doing that, only I got tired of sitting, so I'm just laying down. My back hurts so bad. Throughout the levels, there's many different collectibles. There's bananas, which are basically the same as coins in Mario games. Collect 100 of them and you get an extra life. There's extra lives that take form as balloons in the shape of Donkey Kong's head. Interesting design choice. The Kong letters are found throughout the levels, and if you collect all of them in a level, you get an extra life. Then there's the animal tokens. If you collect three of the matching tokens, you get to play a bonus level to get extra lives with that animal buddy. Animal buddies can be found in crates in certain levels. There's Rambi, a rhinoceros who can ram into enemies and find secrets in walls. Winky, a frog who can jump really high and with him you can defeat certain enemies easily. Unguard, a swordfish who swims through the water pretty swiftly and can impale enemies with his long pointy snout thing. Expresso, an ostrich that can glide through the air and dodge enemies. And there's Squawks, a parrot who only appears once in the level Torchlight Trouble. He carries a lantern so you can see the level. Why not just make the level so you can see it? Anyway, the Animal Buddies are very welcome additions to the game. Similar with Super Mario World having Yoshi, the buddies in this game make it more fun. I know I mentioned this earlier talking about the reviews for the game, but this game is beautiful. Rare really outdid themselves with the art direction. There's so much color, so much personality, so much action, so much Donkey Kong. While this game is visually beautiful, it's also audibly beautiful. David Wise created most of the soundtrack, along with a few tracks from Robin Beanland and Evelyn Novakovic. This soundtrack is amazing. It's got boppin' songs, chill songs, Iron Maiden... No, literally, Gangplank Galleon is apparently inspired by my favorite Iron Maiden song, Hallowed Be Thy Name, which is awesome. Speaking of Gangplank Galleon, this is the final level in the game, where you go up against King K. Rule. This fight is pretty cool. It's not mind-blowing by any means. It plays similar to the other bosses, it's just running around and jumping on K. Rool's head at the perfect time, and then boom, we beat the game. The credits start rolling, and... Uh... Yeah, after the fake credits, K. Rool just gets resurrected somehow, and now the fight is much harder. There's giant cannonballs falling from the sky, and K. Rool is very fast. But in the end, Donkey and Diddy prove to be victorious, they get their banana horde back, and the real credits play. And... Yeah, that's pretty much Donkey Kong Country. The game is a masterpiece. It definitely goes in the list of my favorite games of all time. Sure, the difficulty can be a little infuriating here and there, especially in the later half of the game, but it's still a really good time. With the gameplay, graphics, charming characters, and enemies, along with the beautiful soundtrack to tie it all together, this game is awesome. I can't express that enough. So yeah, that's pretty much Donkey Kong Country. Uh. Yeah, we still have more games to go over. Why me? Why did this have to happen to me? I'm tired. I'm really tired. Good night, everyone.